Can I just say how I, I'm just so into the session, I'm really enjoying this. I want to thank Nick and Matt for including me in this. Um, this is really great. This is a really great start to my Friday. Um, I'm Jake Coolidge. Um, you've heard me talk about hand-drawn map stuff. You've heard me talk about National Park Service stuff. I still work with the National Park Service. Um, but today I'm talking about, um, I do web cartography there, um, but, um, but I've also you know, explored traditional techniques um, of map making. And I've always wondered how that can kind of inform what I'm doing in my digital practice. Um, so I've been doing some recent experiments with intaglio printmaking or copper plate etching. And, um, and I want to I wanna kind of talk about how uh, this medium might be able to express or suggest some geographic phenomena. So, but I want to, um, that's interesting, my cursor keys stopped working, but anyway. Um, so I want to contextualize it a little bit, this work that I've been doing. I actually have a, I do have a fine art background from when I was an undergraduate studying at the University of Washington. So I'm just going to kind of briefly show you some of the work I was doing back then. Um, I was doing woodblock printmaking. So I actually used an air dremel to do this. This was about um, five foot, six foot through the diagonal. Um, uh, so I was actually, it's woodblock, but I was actually working really fast because the air dremel allows you to go really fast. So I was uh, trying to, you know, I was doing, I just, I wanted that kind of immediacy. Um, I was also doing some screen printing at the time. Um, but definitely in Talia too. Um, so I've been, you know, fast forward 10 years, I've gone back to grad school and reinvented myself as a cartographer. So I never became a studio artist. That was never my plan. I didn't think about that when I was going to art school. I just, I just, I wanted to do it. I mean, art school kind of saved my undergraduate uh, journey, really. It gave me something that, you know, I, that spoke to me. But I didn't, I didn't want to, like, put stuff up in galleries and, and do all that. So I worked for a while, and then um, it was cartography that brought me back gave me an outlet for um, connecting what I do creatively with the outside world in a really you know, tangible and satisfying way. And I was doing digital stuff, you know, a lot of us are. Um, and I was starting to build a career around digital cartography. But having established that, I was wanting to, um, you know, I wanted to, um, I wanted to get back to that tangible process. Um, um, I actually first showed this at, uh, in Portland, um, the NASIS meeting in Portland 2012. Um, I was attempting to connect with cartographic processes in, you know, a tangible way. I mean, we, we use this word tangible a lot. I don't want to overuse it, but, um, but, you know, hands-on. Um, you know, these, these maps were all for me in the beginning, and I was get, taking it to Portland. I was going to see if anybody else really even kind of got what I was trying to do here. Um, you know, the process just was kind of, it fed my soul. I needed to work with a pen in my hand after working behind a screen for so long. Um, and I was starting to learn about these places more deeply as I, as I worked through them. It was, I was actually, you know, you think you know a place, but then when you have to study it this hard to actually kind of get it this level of detail, you start, it starts revealing all sorts of things you didn't see before. So, having had a little bit of success with the California map, um, I started taking on new projects, um, new places that I cared about a lot. Um, and I intended to reframe these places uh, to shed new light on them, on familiar places for my viewers. Um, and in the process, I was gaining perspective on those processes of generalization, symbolization, compilation, they're less hidden in the medium um, than when we're, they can sometimes be hidden in our digital tools when we're working this way. And you start to really feel it. It's a lived experience. Um, you know, and I also 
Finally, I wanted to start suggesting to my viewers how the connections of many smaller localities build up to form cohesive regions, not only physically but also culturally. So what are the, you know, what are the patterns of, of land use, land extraction, what's that interaction between the human and the environment, and how does that start to play out in these patterns uh, across the surface of the earth? Um, But, uh, but I, I made this transition back to printmaking, and why, why do this? You know, I, to, to start, I think I wanted to close that loop with that printmaking I'd been doing before with my undergraduate work. Um, what, what might that printmaking process reveal or enable in my cartography? Um, and I wasn't sure where this whole thing was going. Um, and I think my intention started out really simply. Um, it wasn't really that high-minded. I was like, can I even do it? Like, I think that's partly why I started. Um, and I started with this map of Mount Rainier. Um, Intaglio seemed like the best fit, the best printmaking method, based on the mark making that I was doing um, in my hand-drawn maps, so this, like, you know, the, the preponderance of fine lines and hatchering. Um, and so, uh, I, I, I'll talk a little bit about Intaglio, I guess, for those of you who don't know. Um, it's copper plate etching. Um, Intaglio means beneath the surface in, in Italian. So you're, um, you're actually creating grooves beneath the surface of the plate and then you're inking into that plate and then then removing the ink from the surface and then running it through a press um, and I'll return to that theme later on if I left something out but um, so that's the medium but like but what's the map itself about you know why why am I doing this um, Mount Rainier I you know having lived in the you know in Seattle going to the University of Washington Mount Rainier is a really important landmark in the Pacific Northwest and I wanted to with this view I wanted to kind of try to contextualize the mountain in its in its in its home range the Cascade range so um, the vantage point kind of accentuates the looming presence above the surrounding ridges and peaks um, I used a variety of, uh, of etch times um, to create the shallow fine lines in the background. So when I talk about that, it just means that I'm applying acid to the plate at different times. The longer you hold the, the, the plate in the acid, the deeper the etch. So what I do is I, I do a, a sequence of, of, uh, of etch times so I can get fine lines in the background and, and deeper etched lines in the foreground. So I'm trying to get at this, I'm trying to create space and depth that way. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, so this coupled with the, with trace plate tone, which is a little bit of an artifact of my inking, uh, my hand inking process. Some of the incidental marks just created um, in the process of developing the plate kind of further enhances that the sense of atmosphere and depth, but especially atmosphere to me. It's, it, there's moments where it almost feels like the atmosphere is, like there's maybe a little bit of movement here. Um, the, the, yeah, the fluid atmosphere around this monolithic, unmoving mountain. Of course, we know it's moving and um, it might move a lot someday in the future. Um, you know, in some ways, I sort of played it safe with this first attempt at doing, uh, you know, a hand-printed map. Um, I, uh, I pulled some conventions from my earlier hand-drawn maps, so I was, you know, the, some of the labeling, but especially, like, that title lettering. Um, you know, I kind of do these titles. It's, uh, yeah, like, kind of down there in the lower right-hand corner. So... Mimicking some of that stuff that I did with the earlier hand-drawn map stuff, that that idea of building up uh, terrain texture from fine, you know, building up terrain from um, fine line work, um, and that perspectival orientation. Um, so, 
to move forward with Intaglio and try to push it in new directions. Um, you know, I was trying to think about where I could go next. And um, I, I felt that with Mount Rainier, I was demonstrating that I could do it. So that's great. Um, but so, yeah, I mean, I, it's like I still know how to run a press. That was actually a relief. I thought maybe I'd forgotten it after over a decade of not doing it. So that was really nice. Um, but, but what specific affordances might intaglio printmaking provide for cartography? I mean, how can I convey geographic phenomena to my viewer via the symbols that intaglio can create? Because if you can, if you can express your idea in another method, I mean, do you really have to go down this path of like booking time at a, at a group studio where they happen to still have etching presses and going, you know, driving 30 minutes south to do all this, because I'm not going to be able to set this up in my garage. I, you know, I, I can't set up a press that's like this big. Um, so why, why go through the process? Is there something specific to the medium that is like exciting for a cartographer? It gives you a suite of tools that maybe you wouldn't have some other way. So I mentioned earlier that intaglio means under the surface. Um, and so I started thinking about Things that are under the surface, you know, uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you could there's a lot of ways you could go with that. But I gave myself kind of a condensed time frame to kind of kind of work through this. So I just moved back to the Bay Area this past summer, and I got to thinking about fault lines, and that that gave me something to start with my summer experiment. So. I thought it would be pretty easy to draw, you know, there's just like a couple faults, right? Um, but uh, no, the, it's actually quite complex. Um, and it allows us to, you know, to kind of imagine the tremendous amount of force coursing through this part of the world. And this is actually, um, this is worked up in, it's super basic, but I've grabbed the data from USGS and brought it into Q, QGIS. I've actually already reversed it so I can transfer it to a copper plate because that's, uh, you're going you're gonna to have to reverse it in order to get, the, uh, to get it right when you print it. And this is that same, those same fault lines, a little bit hard to see on the screen here, but we've got just the, the straight colors you get from the National Land Cover data set. I've masked out the, um, uh, the, the nine counties of the Bay Area, just arbitrarily putting some boundaries around my mapped area here. Um, and so this is my first proof. Um, actually, you know, and I did bring these. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, we could pass them around or you could just come and look at them later um, if you don't get to see them. But I've got, if you guys, I think some folks have seen these in person, but if you haven't, maybe it's kind of interesting. You get kind of, you get to kind of feel the paper in your hand, and maybe that's interesting. So you guys want to start passing around? They're just, they're just proofs. Nothing, nothing special. You can look at them. You know, it's good. Um, so, so in this scenario here, the the acid etched lines would be the fault lines. So you know, deep channels of ink below the surface of the copper plate. So I'm applying a hard ground to the copper plate, and then I apply, gently apply a grid in pencil so I can make that transfer. Right, we have this grid system here. This is just one inch by one inch squares. And then the hard ground will resist the acid. Everywhere that I draw the fault lines and reveal the copper plate underneath, the acid is gonna attack that, that plate, remove the copper, and reveal, you know, and, and leaves those etched lines that I can, you know, that the ink is going to go in there. And then, but that's just the linear part where you see that that tonal value. That that's um that's aquatint, and importantly, aquatint is something that I did not attempt with the Mount Rainier map, but here I'm using it. Um, it's a technique for adding tonal values to the plate surface. Um, you you apply uh, pine rosin to the surface, and uh, very, very fine pine rosin. And then you, uh, you put it on a hot plate, and it melts it and fixes it to in place. And pine rosin also acts as a, 
as an acid resist. So now you put the 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 rosin the aqua tinted plate into the acid, and then the acid is going to attack the plate around those little tiny microscopic globules. Well, I don't know about microscopic; they're very small globules of pine rosin, and uh, so it creates this like more continuous surface, like these little pock marks in the surface of the plate that they're going to hold the ink for you. Um, so here I use it to represent something softer on the surface of, uh, of the copper plate or on the surface of the earth here. Um, the dust, the trees, shrubs, vegetation. Um, you know, again, this, these are experiments, right? So, um, and then now I'm bringing, then I bring in some hand tools. Um, so here starting to get into scraping and burnishing. Um, so when you're using hand tools on a copper plate, this is a vigorous and negating action. I don't know if that's a word, but anyway. Um, so you're, you're, you know, it's a, it's a negative process, a process of removal. It disturbs that which is there. Um, so this act of negating or altering the plate surface with force, this creates, for me, it creates a map symbol for, uh, for urbanization. In this case, the fault lines have been etched so deep, and that was, I was thinking ahead on that, really, but um, the hand working won't be able to, it'd be very difficult to burnish out those etched lines the way I etched them. So the geology isn't really going anywhere in this case. But the aqua tint yields easily um, to the disturbance. So yeah, I'm starting to get that tension between the geology beneath the surface the vegetation that existed before urbanization occurred, and finally, that urbanization that, when placed onto that darker context, it seems to almost kind of glow at night. So I did it, I did it first, and it was like really kind of tenuous, and then um, I started to work it in a little bit more, and I used the, I used the the land cover data set as a reference, um, but I, you know. The land cover will show in this very precise way where red means urban and, you know, green or whatever means something, you know, natural, you know, a variety of categories. But I'm like scraping at the plate and like, how do I really control that? Like, you can't really, you can't make like something really precise this way. Um, and then finally, I mean, this is just, you know, Dry point is another way of, it's another hand tool that you can kind of start to attack the surface a little bit. Um, this is almost more like a cancellation proof, so you get to the end of like an experiment or like, normally you'd cancel out a plate after you run an addition, but I'm not gonna do that with this one. And so I just wanted to see what dry point would look like. And so dry point is just a sharp tool. I take like a twisted scribe with a very sharp point and you can just like actually just directly scratch into the plate. So rather than etching channels of ink, you're actually raising metal burrs along the surface, these jagged things, and then that, the burrs hold the ink in place. And um, I don't, you know, I don't even know what this is at this point, but it, I started to think maybe it's like, it's a uh, smoke, you know, from wildfires wafting down through the Bay Area. That was another thing that was happening in the summer that I moved back this past summer. Um, so, I'm actually almost on time, which is great. Um, you know, I think that with some time and some patience, I give myself like more time to like really think about the place that I'm trying to depict and, um, and kind of think through the, what the medium can afford me. Um, I think I can get something a little bit more fully realized and it can kind of speak to the place with a little bit more clarity well, you know, it's a moving target, but um, you get closer at what the place means to me. That'll get me closer to kind of where I felt like I was getting somewhere with my hand-drawn maps. Um, that this, this recent experiment for me this past summer suggests that I could get there. It's almost like I've kind of worked up um, a palette of symbols and things that I might be able to work with, but... Uh, but I'm starting to feel like I'm getting some, you know, some, uh, some, con some congruence with geographic phenomena produced with these methods. So thank you, everybody.
everybody. Our time is up, but thank you for attending.